Dre James that makes his third start in his return to the rotation at the D-back to look for a series split with the Padres, but today they're up against you, Darvish. It's the Diamondbacks and the Padres. Diamondbacks baseball is presented to you by Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Join us for some Sunday afternoon baseball on Valley Sports Arizona. Good afternoon from Chase Field. Welcome to Diamondbacks baseball. Steve Berthium and Bob Brenly here with you. D-backs look for a split of this four-game set. We have an intriguing pitching matchup for you today. Dre Jameson up against the veteran Hugh Darvish. But, Bob, we cannot get started without your keys to the game. Well, everybody's been a pedestrian at some point in their life, and you come up to an intersection, and there's a sign you have to look at. One part of the sign says walk, and that's for the Diamondbacks offense. They've drawn the fewest walks in Major League Baseball. The other part of the sign says don't walk, and that's for the D-backs pitching staff. They've allowed 93 walks already, the third most in the Major League. Well, we'll try to jaywalk our way to a series split here. Evan Longoria in the starting lineup against the right-hander, Hugh Darvish, today. Longo, last time we faced the Padres at Petco Park, sent one out of there. He's at third base and set to go. We'll have the National Anthem opening ceremonies right after this on Valley Sports Arizona. At Nissan, we make cars that thrill. Experience the thrill for yourself today. Shop NissanUSA.com. Taco Bell. And by Sanderson Ford, Arizona's largest Ford dealership. Inside Chase Field, nearly set for baseball. Diamondbacks and the Padres, the Sunday home finale here. It's our Arizona Diamondbacks take the field with kids program. The youngsters out there with the Diamondbacks right now. You Darvish and Dre James in your starting pitching matchup. But first, let's turn it over to the voice of Chase Field, Mr. Chuck Drago. Fans, at this time, we ask that you please rise if you are able and please remove your hats. The Arizona Diamondbacks and the San Diego Padres invite you to join in the singing of the Star Spangled Banner performed by the Solel Preschool from Paradise Valley. That's a mic drop right there. Sensational, our preschoolers <laughs> from Paradise Valley with the National Anthem. Welcome to Diamondbacks Baseball. Steve Berthew, Bob Brenly, Jody Jackson, Brandon Webb here with you on Valley Sports Arizona, set for the finale against the San Diego Padres. It's a fast getaway here. Yes, it is. <laughs> See that same kind of energy from the Diamondbacks today. We're going to have a heck of a game. Absolutely. Let's get a look at our Beamer roof report on this Sunday afternoon, April 23rd. We're going to stay all buttoned up today. A little hot out there. And here's a look at your starting pitcher for the Diamondbacks. He's presented by Nissan. It's Dre Jameson, the rookie right-hander. Both Dre's wins have come in relief this season, making his third start since he was returned to the rotation. Coming off a rather short start against the Cardinals last time out, went only three and two thirds, gave up two runs on three hits. However, he did walk four batters, and uh, you know our keys to the game: limit the walks to the other team and 
try to maximize your base on balls. Well, the ball always travels differently here when we're all buttoned up. The roof and outfield panels closed. This is the Beamer Roof Report, so pitching will be at a premium here today, especially against this Padres lineup. Even after taking two of three in the series to this point, they're still under 500 to start the year, San Diego, 11 and 12 overall, and third in the National League West. Here's their lineup presented by your Valley Chevy dealers. That guy will lead it off once again today. It is first home run of the season yesterday. You see how Bob Melvin lines up the rest of the Padres for this ball game. They have a, a long awaited off day tomorrow. They've been grinding away. The Padres have had a tough early season schedule sure, as yeah. far as off days, but uh, they get an off day tomorrow. And then they get home games in Mexico. Yeah, how about so, that? Yeah. <laughs> not exactly a restful <laughs> start for San Diego. A.D. Marshall Jewelers gives us a look around the diamond at the D-back defense. And yeah, we're going to highlight Corbin Carroll. He's playing left field today where he started 10 times, three times in center, seven times in right. That's not as easy as it might sound. The ball comes off the bat differently to those corner spots, and Corbin Carroll has done a great job no matter where Torrey puts it. Diamondback still the only National League West team with a winning record at the start of play today, leading the division. And looking for a second series split with San Diego this season. Fernando Tatis Jr. will lead it off for the Padres. Mike Malinsky, our plate umpire, calling balls and strikes, and we're set to go on a Sunday afternoon from downtown Phoenix. Glad you're with us on Valley Sports Arizona. Here is Tatis. I'm going to point this out before he even throws a pitch. But yeah. We've seen Tatis get hammered inside throughout this series. Fastballs up and in, knocked him off the plate a couple times. See if Dre Jameson follows that same pattern. 95 on that sinker down. Tatis homered off Merrill Kelly in his first at bat last night. Said he was glad to get that first one out of the way. Good start for Dre Jameson, even though he's only two pitches into the ball game. He's thrown first pitch strikes just 46% of the time this year. The league average is 61. Obviously, something Dre and Brent Strom would like to see him improve upon. We have found with Dre especially that when he throws first pitch strikes he is able to quickly get ahead in the count and stay ahead put the guy away in three or four pitches. Let's see if he can do that here. There's your fastball up at 98 and it's one and two. You're right Tatis has seen that consistently through four games so far. You know you think back to the seasons past Christian Walker was a guy that always saw fastballs up and in every opponent didn't matter who the pitcher was he was going to get pushed off the plate. Another one in there. This is where you don't want Dre to waste too many pitches. It's great to get ahead but you got to stay ahead and put the guy away. Don't let him extend the at bat. Beyond the reach of Ahmed Tatis starting to feel it now a lead off single. Didn't think it was going to take him long to get going. Yeah especially the numbers he put up at the minor league level before coming back to the major leagues. It looked like he might have been over swinging a little bit in his first couple games of this series but uh, he seems to be locked in now. There is no let up in this lineup here is Juan Soto. Starts him off with a slider. Soto had his first two hits of the series in San Diego's win last night. Singled and scored in each of his first uh, or final two at bats. That came not coincidentally while hitting third in the lineup, which is his preferred spot. Much has been made about that to start the year. And then Tatis is back. That's a bullet into right. Tatis rounding second, headed for third. Two hard singles open things up for the Padres. Two very well struck balls that time. Haven Smith holding on Tatis at first just couldn't react quickly enough to his right to try to knock that one down. The Padres have it cooking early. They're on the corners. No outs for Manny Machado. Manny has had a slow start. His OPS right there you see at 543 through 22 games is the lowest of his career at this point in the season. And he is back in the lineup this afternoon. He was off last night dealing with some back soreness.
A lot of room on that right side. Check swing roller over there. Haven going to third. Tatis is out of there. They got him. Haven Smith had it. He's getting the start at first base for Christian Walker today. Saw Tatis roll off that bag and decided to throw over there. Yeah, a lot of options here for Haven Smith on this play. He checks the runner at third and decides, hey, if I go to the bag, Tatis is going to try to sneak in the back door. So instead, he fires to third base. Bob Melvin will challenge the out call. That's Jim Wolf at third. Well, the bad news is if you get this call overturned, is challenging on third base. It's Xander Bogarts at the plate with the bases loaded and nobody out, so you need this call to stand here. I remember Bob Melvin, if you lose your challenge, you don't get another one the rest of the game. And we're only three batters in. But they have a chance for a big inning right here. They're going to take it. Here's our best look, we think. Ooh. Well, Jim Wolf was in a good spot to make the call. Those are always tough for an umpire because you're watching the base and the hand, and you're also trying to keep an eye on where the tag is applied and when it's applied. Tough call for any umpire. You're right. You know, you're right, Bob Haven. Could have gone to third, could have gone to second, could have stepped on first. He had the multiple choice there. Yeah. Let's hope he had the right answer. He might have been able to bait Tatis even a little more had he started to turn back toward first base. Tatis probably would have broke for home and uh, would have been an easier play at third base, but you've got to make those decisions in a matter of split seconds. Jim Wolf, the third base umpire, down with Alan Porter, the crew chief, who's at second today, waiting word from New York. There's Alan Porter. Padres come into today third in the division. They're a game and a half the diva, a game and a half behind the Diamondbacks lead. And here's Alan Porter. After review, the call on the field stands. Runners up. Ooh. Ooh. San Diego Ooh. loses their count. That is an enormous result for the Diamondbacks. Sure is. For a number of reasons. As you said, Bob Melvin has now lost his challenge for the rest of the ball game, and now a ground ball, turn a double play, get out of the inning. But you're going to have to deal with Xander Bogarts, their best hitter so far this year. Leading the Padres in hits, home runs, and OPS. So now you've got Soto at second base, Machado at first, and one out. And there's a strike at 97 from Dre Jameson. Bogarts three hits in the series. He has doubled and homered. Drew a pair of walks in their win last night. Nice stop. Jose Herrera back there today. Diamondbacks have two catchers that are very mobile back there. Herrera a little better at blocking balls for me. He squared that one up right in the middle of the chest protector, had his shoulders leaning forward so the ball didn't get too far away. Yeah, Montero's been doing a great job behind the plate. When you consider what was expected of him, Moreno, excuse me, going into the season, mm -hmm. now he finds himself as the everyday guy back behind the plate. I think he's handled himself tremendously well. Also one of the team leaders in RBIs this yeah. year, Gabby. The 1 1 to Bogarts. Back pick. Ooh. Just back in time. Pavin let the ball roll away. He's safe, says Nate Tomlinson down there. It might not be the last time you see that in this ball game. Herrera loves to throw behind those runners, catch him napping a little bit. Oh, man. They're checking. Tori Lovello has his hand up, and they wave it off. No challenge. Yeah, perhaps if Pavin had been able to hang on to the baseball right there, that might have been worth a look, but it just slipped out right there at the end. So it's a count of two balls and one strike on Xander Bogarts. Bogarts has reached base safely in all 23 games this year, the only major league player to do that. The 
Yeah, we talked about a potential back pick at second base last night when Soto was running out there taking a huge secondary lead. Ronerworth on deck doing the same thing here today. 3 1. Dre has had problems throwing consistent strikes in this role as a starter. Now they are loaded. And Cronenworth is the hitter. Brent Strong so far for Dre, 13 pitches, more balls than strikes. Yeah, it seems to be a philosophy around baseball. I was talking to Mud, Mark Grant next door, the Padres uh, color analyst, and He's seen the same thing that I'm seeing this year. A lot of behind in the count breaking balls, 2 1, 3 1, 3 2 change ups. It just seems like a lot of pitchers or pitching staffs are not willing to challenge with a fastball when they're behind in the count. Well, this was the issue for Dre, certainly in his start previous to this, which was at St. Louis last Tuesday. He walked four batters and was able to go only three and two thirds. Threw 71 pitches in that start against the Cardinals, only 39 strikes, and he's headed in the same direction here so far. Cronenworth, the hitter, bases full of Padres and one out. Soto is at third, Machado is at second, Bogarts at first. There's ball one. Cronenworth batting 213 through his first 22 games. Two career grand slams. Cronenworth is another key Padres bat who's been relatively quiet offensively to this point. Got a couple of hits. He's doubled and walked. He's also struck out four times. Their offense has been a little slow to get going. Yeah, with the exception of Bogarts, they've just been misfiring up and down the lineup. We've talked about it throughout this series. You know eventually they're going to figure it out. Hopefully oh, yeah. not till tomorrow. Down the corner and push foul. It does tend to get between your ears a little bit when you look up at the big board in center field and you see your average of uh, Cronin worst case 213. Some guys begin with a one. That's uh, demoralizing when you look up there and there's 15 foot tall numbers of your batting average, and it's not pretty. Now you're three weeks into the season now. One and two. Same spot. 98. Dre coming with the hard stuff here. He faced the Padres in San Diego, Dre Jameson, second series of the year. And it was an appearance at Petco Park, two innings in relief, and picked up his first career save. That was back April 4th. So he has seen him briefly once before this. This is lifted out to shallow left center. Alec Thomas is under it. Soto's at third. He'll come home, throw into third, and the Padres get a run across. RBI for Cronenworth. That's his 10. At this stage, you're just in damage control. He's had the base loaded twice in this inning. If he can escape with only one run allowed, that would be a moral victory. And that final out to get's a big one, the veteran Matt Carpenter. Who homered here Thursday in the opener, and then in his first at bat last night, at least a double off the wall in center. That was his second hit in the series. He's knocked in a couple of runs. And again, Dre behind, trying the curveball that time. Carpenter now 37 years old, his 13th season in the big leagues. Pitch number 20 from Dre right here. Now those high pitch counts in the first inning are something that's plagued pretty much everybody in the rotation with the exception maybe of Zach Gallen but it seems like every starting pitcher really has trouble settling in of course the Padres aren't allowing him to settle in. 
especially with the youngsters Ryan Nelson Dre Jameson. Brent Strom patience required with this young pitching staff got some more youngsters on the way Tommy Henry makes the start tomorrow here against the Royals. And Ryan Nelson after that rotation getting younger. 2 1 to Carpenter. Kansas City comes in tomorrow night for the first of three. Before we go to Denver and Dallas to face the Rockies and Rangers later this week. Blasted to center. Alec Thomas won't get it. It's over his head and off the wall. Machado is home. They wave Bogarts as well. The throw is not in time, and the Padres have a 3 0 lead. Matt Carpenter did the exact same thing as first at bat here last night a double off the wall in center. Oh, up and out over the plate at 98. Had a little bit of tailing action, but not enough to miss the bat. Chases Alec Thomas all the way back to the 407 mark. Very similar to the one he hit in the ball game last night. Well, a lot of loud contact early. Tatis 109, Soto 106. That ball off the bat of Carpenter at 105. I saw Kim who had the backbreaker hit in the game last night. He's only hit in the series that two out, two run CNI single through the left side that gave the Padres the lead in the sixth inning. Seven down below the knees with that sink at a two and two. 25 pitches in counting for Dre Jameson. First round pick out of Ball State. Kim gets a timeout. Kim over his previous 10 games, even with that hit last night, just three for 31 up there. Ball State University is in the Mid-America Conference. Ohio University played against them. The only reason I remember that is because they had an outfielder by the name of Demetrius Sanders, who was uh, he was the Corbin Carroll of his day in the Mid-America Conference. <laughs> Back pick. Carpenter was well off that second base bag. Herrera throws down there. And again, they want to have a look at that. No challenge from Torrey. Had the throw been on the shortstop side of the bag, they might have had a shot at Carpenter that time, but you could see Josh had to reach to his left to receive the throw and then drag the tag all the way back across the bag. This has become an epidemic in this series for the Diamondbacks of not being able to close out either at bats or innings. San Diego has scored 16 runs in the series so far. 13 of those 16 have come with two out. Pitch number 29 on the way. Trent Grisham would be next. It's at least a 30 pitch first for Dre Jameson. We'll keep going. Second walk in the inning. Eighth man to bat in the San Diego first is Grisham. He is 
the Padres leader in extra base hits this year. Trey Christian works on this club to saying something. Grisham had a pair of two out two run doubles in the opener here Thursday speaking of two out runs. And those have been his only two hits in this series. And this will really hurt your defense. They're staying around with their hands on their hips. Some guys bent over with their hands on their knees. Action, action, action. Throw the ball over the plate. Let your defense work. Ninety nine just reared up and threw it right by him. And that might be Dre's best bet at this point just to get out of this first. Two on and two out three runs already home for San Diego. He's walked two, gone to a three ball count on Grisham Nola the number nine man on deck pitch number thirty five in this inning on the way. Third walk in the first for Dre and somebody needs to come up with something quick. Number nine man bats in the first for the visitors. Nola singled in the opener here. He was 0 for 3 with a walk last night. At this point you worry not just about the ball game but the health of your young pitcher you get this north in one inning and people get real nervous the doctors especially Carpenters at third Kim's at second Grisham's at first and it's not like Dre Jameson is a uh, finesse pitcher he's a hundred percent every delivery and that takes a lot out of a guy especially when you get up above 30 pitches in any one inning well it's just that reason why some evaluators think he might be better served being a reliever, even a closer with his stuff. Well, he's a strike away from ending this, but uh, he's one swing away from some major damage. Anthony Misevich, the left hander in the Sanderson Ford bullpen, made his D backs debut here the other night. The 1 2 to Nola. Well, it's going to be at least a 40 pitch first inning for Dre. When a starting pitcher takes the mound and doesn't have all of his weapons working the way you would like, usually there's one pitch you can go to to throw a strike when you need to. But Dre's had problems keeping the sinker in the zone. The four seamer has been above the zone a number of times. He's thrown a few sliders and missed with those. 40 pitches, 20 strikes. There it is. Ooh. This is way past Tori Labello's comfort level, just talking about the young man's health. Three two to Nola. Tati started the inning with a base hit. 
was after Pavin Smith threw over there to pick him off third. It looked like Dre might get out of here without any damage, but it's just been one batter after another. And now another full count. He's walked the last two. Got him. Padres get nine men to the plate. They put a three spot up. Some work to do here at Chase Field. For the three spot up there today, time to counter punch. Let's look at the lineup for Tori Lovello, presented by your Valley Chevy dealer. A little bit of a different look, day game after a night game against a right handed pitcher. Rojas will lead it off, but we're going to highlight Alec Thomas. This series, he's two for nine. He struck out a couple times. We talk all the time about the speed and the pressure that the Diamondbacks can put on an opponent, but you need to get the fast guys on base. Josh Rojas gets first look at the right hander, Yu Darvish, to lead it off. Rojas tied with Cattell Marte for the D backs lead in hits this year. Three hits, three RBIs in the series. Name a pitch, any pitch. Splitter. He throws one. <laughs> I tell you what, he faced the Brewers in his last start, you Darvish, and had that splitter dancing up there wow. to the tune of a dozen strikeouts. Here comes one right here. Spike that one in the dirt ahead in the count 0 and 2. And there's Darvish. He throw. We've run out of room on the graphic, yeah. frankly. <laughs> he says he throws 12 different pitches, but he's talking about a slow curve and a hard curve, a slow slider and a hard slider. But he's got a whole pocket full of pitches. And Darvish. Has hit the hundred pitch mark in each of his last two starts. He allowed five runs, six and a third against the Mets in New York. Previous outing was a week ago, and boy, he was impressive. Sunday at Petco, struck out 12 Brewers, but lost a one nothing game. How about that? So he is 0 and 2, but he's pitched a whole lot better than that. What was that? That was the slow curve. <laughs> I'll say so. <laughs> two and two. And that split finger pitch, that was the big pitch that got those dozen strikeouts against Milwaukee last week. It was Darvish's 50th career game, 50 with double digit strikeouts. Another splitter. And she get a piece. Darvish is on it. And they retire Rojas. Let's get a look around the diamond at the Padres defense presented by E.D. Marshall Jewelers. You know, partner, we talk about the no-fly zone when the D-backs have their jackrabbit outfield in there. Trent Grisham has put on a pretty good show in this series, a two-time gold glove winner. He covers a ton of ground out there in center field. He was a gold lover last year for the Padres. Here is Cattell Marte, who has D.H. duty today. With Rojas at second, and Longoria playing third. Evan in the cleanup spot today. Cattell has been the offensive leader the D-backs were hoping to see so far this year. And represents their best chance to get to you, Darvish. He is 10 for 31 against Darvish career with a couple of home runs. Marte leading the Diamondbacks in runs and OPS and extra base hits. He has four hits in this series. Diamondbacks have had very little in the way of solutions to the problem of you Darvish. He has dominated them the last several years. Since the beginning of the 2021 season, 4 0 and 6 starts. There's Barry Enright working with Dre Jameson. Well, Cattell gets his timeout. Darvish 4 0 in his last six against the D backs, and over that stretch, a 1 9 5 ERA. They've not been able to do much with him. Litter. 
There's a sinker that time. He had his fingers split on the baseball. Occasionally we can peek in from our center field camera and look into Darvish's glove. If you see the index and middle finger close together, that's either going to be a sinker, a four seam, or a slide or something. But when you see white between his middle and index finger, that's the splitter. That should be a split finger. Is that something you could pick up if you're the hitter coming out of his hand? Uh, very late. It, it, you're better off if you have a runner at second that can peek in there and see that and relay it to the hitter at the plate. He just lost the grip on that time. And of course, all that's legal as long as you're not yeah. using detection devices. 3 2. Well, that was the split, and that's his yeah. first strikeout. Now you can see White as he takes his hand out of the glove right there, and there's a splitter with that downward movement. We'll have some tumbling action. Looks like it's going to be a fastball out of his hand, but enough off speed and enough downward movement to get a lot of swings and misses on that pitch. Orban Carroll bats third. Another multi hit game for Corbin last night. He's got three hits in the series. You're jamming me. Xander Bogart, I thought you might like that. A little petty reference. Never too soon. 3 0 San Diego after one. Diamondbacks baseball and got some youngsters with us this afternoon. Diamondbacks drill the Padres early. Hey, congratulations to all the Diamondback fans out there, Bob. We went over $120,000. Nice. Our generous sponsor doubled the match or matched the offer, so we got over $180,000 for Make a Wish yesterday. And we thank you, our Diamondback fans, as always. D backs give back 50 50 raffle supported by Avnet back up and running. Already over $12,000 today. And a good crowd here. So a big jackpot coming up. DBAX.com slash 50-50 is the place to get your tickets. Global Credit Union call to the bullpen. A long first for Dre Jamison. So it's the left-hander, Anthony Masevich, who starts the second. Saw Masevich in the first game of this series. Pitched two-thirds of an inning. Gave up a hit. Struck out a couple of batters. Walked one. Did not allow a run. Fernando Tatis, who led off the first, leads off the second. Sevich's appearance here Thursday against the Padres was his Diamondback debut. Last season, 32 appearances between the Mariners and the Royals for Anthony Masevich, 28 year old left hander. And acquired by the Diamondbacks at the end of March, just after opening day in a cash deal from the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, the bad news is it's 3 0. Good news is it's just the second inning. A lot of baseball left to play. Yeah, the Diamondbacks were down 2 0 after a half inning last night. Very quickly took a 3 2 lead. Try to drop that big curveball in the outside corner right there. As we mentioned in his first at bat, Tatis has been pounded inside with fastballs, and that slow breaking ball, if it gets back to the corner, will be effective. Way up in the air, shallow center alley coming in. Well, one more thought on Dre Jameson, and obviously this isn't the way he wanted it to go. No one did, but Mike Hazen talked about this the other day when Madison Bumgarner was DFA, that they will have a young staff, the Brandon Fox, the Slade Chaconis, the Blake Walstons, Tommy Henrys, all those guys will be here at some point, and there will be growing pains with that process, and this is to be expected. No question about it. We'll see flashes of brilliance, and we'll see what we saw today from time to time. It's all part of the learning process at the major league level and learning yourself, what you can do, how you're at your most effective, Part of the process. Soto singled and scored in the first. There'd be days like this, Mama said. 
Yes, she did. She didn't lie. <laughs> Never does. One and one. Pitch timer right down to the nub. Got it in there with a slider for a strike, and it's one ball and two strikes. And Soto requests time. What do you make of Soto when the two hole versus the three hole is too much made of that? He seems to be fine with it publicly. I never really understood that myself. You know, wherever you hit in the lineup, uh, you have one job get a good pitch and hit it hard. If you don't get it, take your base on balls. It doesn't matter if you're hitting first or eighth or ninth. But uh, I think. Uh, from what I've heard from the Padres, Soto feels like when he's in the two hole, he has to act like a two hole hitter. If the runner's on base, he's got to move him. You know, if there's a runner at second, he's got to roll over and hit a ground ball to the right side. And that's not what Bob Melvin wants. He just wants him to be himself. And Savage making short order of the top two hitters in this Padre lineup. Two outs in the second. I mean, after the first time through the batting order, you, you never know. Yeah. The leadoff hitter might lead off one time the entire ball game. Well, the Padres have said the reason they want Soto batting second is they can have two right-hand bats behind him mm -hmm. in Manny Machado and Xander Bogart. That would discourage the opposition from putting a left-hand pitcher in there just to face Soto. You stack two righties behind him. Yep. That's the thinking, anyway. But uh, Soto's stated preference is to bat third, but for now he's going along with the program. I think back to the 01 season uh, when David DeLucci would get a start, I'd like to hit him in the two hole in the lineup ahead of Gonzo, mm -hmm. trying to bait the other team into bringing in that lefty, and then I would hit Greg Colbrun or Danny Bautista or Reggie Sanders, whoever I had available on the bench that day, for David DeLucci. He sort of set a trap. Try to. That one just beyond the reach of Nick Ahmed. And Machado's aboard a two-on single. Did it work a lot? A few times, yeah. I, I'd have to go back and check the game logs, but yeah, I think it did. Because David was a very dangerous hitter in his own right, and a lot of times Tony Womack was at the top of the order, so we had three lefties stacked at the top, and that four hole in our lineup was rotating. Sometimes it was Gracie, sometimes it was Greg Colburn, sometimes it was Maddie, so. The first three, if they were all lefties, I'd like to stick David in between Womack and Gonzalez just to get that one righty on lefty matchup. Clean up man for the Padres is Xander Bogarts. Of course, David DeLucci told me I can hit lefties. <laughs> right? <laughs> and there's that part of the debate. Yeah. Once you got everybody in the right spot, then you have to deal with that. Not an easy job, is it? No, it isn't easy. Not at all. But I was very fortunate to have a bunch of guys who were willing to do whatever it took to win ball games. So they put their ego at the front door of the clubhouse when they checked in every day and didn't pick it up until they left. Fly ball to center Alec Thomas has room. Emma Savage pulls off the Jets. It's three nothing San Diego. and team shop discounts access to exclusive events and more when you become a D-backs Advantage member you can text 602-462-4600 or visit dbacks.com slash memberships to learn more you Darvish a one two three first now Longoria leads off the second Longo has been swinging it well lately over his last eight games he's hit 321 Got an OPS over 950 with a double, a couple homers, and driven in three. Yeah, the fit has been really nice. And it seems like Bob Longo's being used exactly the way you would want him to be used. Three times a week, pick a number, but here and there in the right spots. And there's a discussion now with Mike Malinsky. Start the timer. Haven't seen a lot of lefties recently, just one start over the last week for Longo. But that was a two hit game for him Tuesday at St. Louis. 
Yeah, same thing for Nick Ahmed at shortstop. Geraldo Perdomo's been swinging the bat extremely well. We've seen a boatload of right-handers lately, so Nick in there against a the righty today. Geraldo Perdomo gets the day off to start. Yeah, I mean that's the thing, right? Uh, more manager questions for you. I mean, you have your matchups right, right, left, but sometimes you might face a string of righties or lefties, and guys have to play at some point. Sure, you got to get them in there and get them some at bats. Uh, that's part of the juggling act you go through as a manager. You talk to your hitting coaches, you talk to your pitching coaches, trying to figure out how it all fits together. Evan lifts this out to right center. And Tatis out near the pool. Hey, I can feel a D-backs home run coming today. When the D-backs hit big, you win big. Get a free jumbo jack with a large drink purchase the day after the D-backs hit a home run. Haven Smith gets the start at first base. Chance to get a left-hand bat in there against Darvish. No Christian Walker this afternoon. Kirsten last night was hit by a pitch on the left forearm that was being iced down after the game. He said he was just fine, but not in the lineup today. There's that sweeper. Geez, that's one more pitch that he threw. Yeah, add another. <laughs> Make it 13. He needs got more pitches than Bill Russell had rings. Brent Strom would love that reference. Huge Celtics fan down there, Strom. 0-2 on Pavin, who has singled and walked twice in the series. Just trying to push that down that third base line. Well, we've seen this throughout this series for the Padres outfield defense Soto way over toward the line in left Grisham shaded over toward the gap in left center and Tatis almost in front of the pool left to cover all that territory on the right side. What do you make of that. Well I think it depends on the guy you have on the mound if you have a pitcher that can throw the ball where he wants to he'll almost force Pavin Smith to hit the ball into the teeth of his defense. Mm. If you get a guy on the mound that maybe doesn't always throw the ball where he wants to, that's when you can get beat on a shift like this. I think back to the Atlanta Braves when they had Glavin and Smoltz and you know all, all the Maddox, Steve Avery. These guys could hit a mosquito in the rear end if they wanted to. I mean, they threw the ball right where they wanted to almost every time, and the Braves would play the most overshifted outfield defense you ever saw. Because they knew their pitcher was going to hit his spots and force the hitter to hit the ball into the defense. Didn't go, says Jim Wolf. So a pitcher that only might wear out the defense because they're out there a long time, <laughs> but they're not able to play where they might like to play. Yeah. Two and two on Paven Smith, Jake McCarthy on deck. It's full. Hot afternoon here at Chase Field. We saw Dre Jamison sweating bullets in that first inning, and you Darvish working up a pretty good lather out there. Jake up next, three and two on Paven. Still trying to score it up that line. There's a chance for Bruce Weinsoff, our Golden Glover in left field today. Bruce has got his signature move. Bruce, wax on, winds off. Thumbs up. <laughs> the Mr. Miyagi of our Golden Glovers. That's There's right. uh, Dr. Martin Van Nostren, David Van Ness. Where's he from? From the clinic. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> now, one out walk, first base runner against Darvish. I need to see Elaine Bennis's file, please. Well, if there's one guy that's not really been firing so far in this offense, Bob, it's been Jake McCarthy. They got to get him going. He was such a big part of the offense last couple of months of last year. No question about it. And we talked about uh, the fact that he missed a lot of spring training with that illness. But, you know, we're getting deeper into the season here. You'd like to think he's in that cage working on his timing, trying to get right. There's a little tapper to first. Got to put the tag on Pavin, and they get the double play. So we hit the third, down 3 nothing.
DBACKS.COM. Boy, great to see the kids at the ballpark today. They had a big parade of little leaguers around the warning yeah. track before the game. I didn't think it was ever going to end. <laughs> the whole lot of them. Good you crowd to, in here again today. Got to give them something to cheer about. You know they want to make noise. See, Cronenworth leads off the third against Anthony Masevich. Cronenworth drove in the game's first run with a fly ball back in that first. Well, this is the final game of that 23 game stretch that we circled to start the year. D backs 12 and 10 so far. Game 23 today when they're playing basically their entire first part of their first month of the year against very good teams. Pretty much all teams with winning records, postseason contenders. And even with this result, I think you'd absolutely. Take whatever they've accomplished to this point and go running. Now you've got teams like Kansas City coming in here starting tomorrow night. Things might get a little bit easier. Alec Thomas, go get it. He can't quite reach it. And Cronenworth's on the run. He's thinking three here. And he's going to get there. Standing up, it's a triple for Jake Cronenworth. So odd to see a ball drop in anywhere near Alec Thomas, but he was on a dead sprint that time. Very nearly lost his balance as he got to the warning track. Just couldn't catch up to that drive off the bat of Cronenworth. And Cronenworth, some left on left crime right there. Here comes another lefty, Carpenter, who had a two run double off the wall in center his first time up. Part of that three run Padre first. Diamondbacks a heavy emphasis on the Dodgers and the Padres to begin the season part of their difficult schedule to start the year. And just like L.A. San Diego will be in the rearview mirror after today. We won't see the Padres again after this until the middle of August. Mm -hmm. I expect that Manny Machado and company would be doing a little bit better by then than they are now. Yeah, I agree with you about the early start to the season. Orban Carroll in left. Cronenworth will test the arm. And he's home with a fourth San Diego run. I was just about to say, I agree with you about the. Uh, the tough schedule in the early part of the season, but the other side of the coin is the Dodgers are a little undermanned. They're missing some of their starting pitchers. As we talked about throughout this series, the Padres aren't firing on all cylinders yet offensively. You'd like to think we won a few more of these games early in the season based on the way the Dodgers and the Padres have started. It's a 4 nothing gap now. Here is Hassan Kim who walked his first time. Scooped out behind second. McCarthy coming in shallow right. And there's two outs in the third. Center fielder, Trent Grisham. Trent Grisham walked his first time up. Padres have out hit the Diamondbacks five zip. They lead it four nothing. Anderson Ford bullpen is going to be busy back there today after Dre Jameson went only one inning. Right hander Peter Solomon 
who has been a long man back there this year. Darvish with a 4 0 lead. He's pacing like a caged lion over there. He wants that first win. I'm talking about Darvish, and we talk about opposing hitters coming in here saying how much they love Chase Field. Great batter's eye, great hitting environment, especially with the roof and the panels open. Darvish doesn't mind pitching here. Last season, two starts, 12 innings, gave up one hit and no runs. Yeah, he's had their number the last several years. Two and two on the Padre center fielder. Who skies one way up there. McCarthy in pursuit near the corner. San Diego gets one more across. Diamondbacks trail it for zip. Ball game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fernando Jr.'s daddy had a big day on this day in baseball history. And yeah, he had a very good career, Fernando sure Tatis Sr. Hit 113 homers over 11 years. Played for the Rangers, Cardinals. He was a Montreal Expo, Baltimore, the Mets. Sun's pretty good too. Alec Thomas leads off the third down 4 0. Now we came close today, Boston playing in Milwaukee. I'll say Yoshida hit two home runs in the eighth inning. The second one was a grand slam. The first one was not, however. He's a good player. We he saw sure a lot is. of him in the World Baseball Classic. You yeah. can see why Boston wanted to bring him over. Here's the slow sweeping breaking ball from Hugh Darvish. Alec, two hits in the series. He has scored three runs. I don't think Darvish should be allowed to throw the sweeper. He's got enough pitches. <laughs> There's that slow curve you like. Well, that's one rule change they ought to think about. Right? Pitcher has to tell you, I'm only going to throw fastball slider today. Nothing else. You know what? I bet you could clear that <laughs> through the union too. <laughs> Darvish get, doesn't get to throw that. There's a bouncer that stays fair for Cronenworth and there's one away. Hey fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free season beef crunchy tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Nick Alabad the start at shortstop, Nick hitting 310 on the year. Both Longoria and Ahmed in there against the right hander today. They haven't had a lot of at bats this week, so they need the reps. Nick back after missing nearly all of last year had that long overdue right shoulder surgery last June. Fully healthy now he's looked real good. That shoulder really wiped out or nagged him for three full seasons that labrum tear had bone spurs in that right shoulder. And finally just had to give in and have the operation but. Feels great this year. Says he's happy he doesn't have to just watch the games on TV. I yeah. apologize for you as well as myself. It's a lot to put up with, we know. Oh, there's Ooh. a low strike from Mike Malinsky. Wanted to. This guy doesn't need any help. Shadow comes in from third to clean that up. Two outs in the third. You mentioned the WBC. Of course, Hugh Darvish had his season debut pushed back a bit by the Padres after he participated with Team Japan. The first start came in the Padres' sixth game this year. They're using a six-man rotation for the moment. And that was against the Diamondbacks at Petco Park earlier this month. 
Gave up just a run on three hits. He went five innings. Jose Herrera gets the start behind the plate. Last time we saw Jose was in St. Louis, got his bell rung on a foul tip off the mask and had to leave the ball game. Talked to him the next day, said he was just fine. Six starts behind the plate this year. This is number seven. There's a the strike. Yeah, he too has done a real nice job behind the plate. And anytime your backup catcher is carrying an average of 250 or better, you're pretty happy with that production. One and one. Oh boy. This is the sweeper sneaks it through the back door, steals a strike, gets ahead. I think he's just out there experimenting now. Let's try this. Let's see what happens if I throw it off my little finger or my thumb only. I mean, we used to watch Zach Greinke do this all sure, the time. Sure. I wonder what happens if I throw it like this. <laughs> he doesn't need a bullpen session. Just does it in the game. Now well, he needs to find something else. That's his second base on balls. He walked four Diamondbacks in his first appearance against the D-backs last year, or the, I should say the, earlier this month. So a two out base runner for Josh Rohan. Yeah the issue is the walks have come to the wrong guys Paven Smith and Jose Herrera neither one of them <laughs> stolen base threats base cloggers and even trailing by four runs in this game. I think the Diamondbacks have to continue to put pressure on other teams. That's how they're going to win games this year with their speed. Well I think that goes back to one of your keys to the game which is walk you can't steal bases and. Yeah. Intimidate the opposition unless you have base runners, and that's been a big problem for the Diamondbacks. Because yeah, we've seen the effect it has on opposing teams when Jake McCarthy or Alec Thomas or Corbin Carroll or Josh Rojas get on base, it changes everything in the game. But they are right near the bottom of the major leagues in terms of team on base percentage. They simply haven't had enough base runners to do that, at least not consistently. I think we yeah. talked a lot about that Bob about how the new rules would fit the Diamondbacks but interestingly enough they've become a team that many times has relied on the big inning. Yeah. Which is didn't seem to be in their DNA. Well, I think back to that opening series in L.A. when they ran the Dodgers right out of Dodger Stadium. Yeah. They, they, they had no answer for the D-back speed because the right guys were getting on base. Josh digs that one out Darvish cleans it up. And he's through three. Off to the fourth at Chase Field. Diamondbacks trail the Padres. Four zip. Jim Redondo for your service. Welcome to the ball game today. Absolutely. Got good seats too. Yeah, nice. Global Credit Union call to the bullpen. Right-hander Peter Solomon his fourth appearance since his Reno recall earlier this year. He was outstanding. On the previous road trip at Miami when Peter came in worked three scoreless of long relief but was hard hit at St. Louis Wednesday. Got touched up for seven runs including a Nolan Gorman grand slam. Austin Nola the catcher bats ninth leads off the Padre fourth. Just joining us, it was a long first for rookie Dre Jameson through 43 pitches in a three run San Diego first. They sent nine men to the plate, and Dre was done for the day after one inning. Misevich worked the second and third. Now Solomon is on to start the fourth. 43 pitches in that first for Dre, 22 for strikes. And you've got Kansas City coming in for three starting tomorrow night, so Tori Lovello needs some answers for that bullpen. Could use some length from Solomon here this afternoon.
Peter was acquired by the Diamondbacks in the minor league phase of the Rule 5 draft. Open this year with Reno made one start for the Aces before he was up here and a good start to the fourth. I have my staff look it up partner it just seems like the Padres are hitting the ball a lot harder than the D backs which stands to reason when you Darvish is on the mound but the Padres have had six balls over 101 miles an hour off the bat already Diamondbacks have had five balls in play under 80. Well here's the interesting thing to your point with Tatis up there his home run last night which by the way was his first at September of 2021 was strong enough to hit it out but at only 89 miles an hour off the bat now Bob Melvin was asked how is that possible and Mel said I've never seen a ball hit out at less than 90 miles an hour I mean he did just tuck it right into the front row but it just kept carrying and carrying an 89 mile an hour home run that's not a lot of exit velo that backs up long at third he's done that once or twice yes he has Two outs in the floor. Always looks so calm, cool, and collected when he fields a ground ball down there at third base, whether it's charging, making a barehanded player, in that case, backing up a step or two. Very relaxed over there at third base. Two outs for Juan Soto, who has singled and struck out. Soto has now played a total of 75 games with San Diego following his trade from the Nationals last season. And as a Padre, he's hit just 223. And we're talking 75 games. Well, we got an issue here around home plates. <laughs> Mike Malinsky making sure the foot is in the right spot, right on that back line. You make a big blockbuster trade to bring in Juan Soto to think that's going to put you over the top, but he's got 25 RBIs in 75 games. Yeah, something uh, just does not compute there. Yeah. That wasn't enough, so they went out and bought Xander Bogarts this winter for $280 million. Well, seeing Soto dig that big hole in the batter's box reminds me of a story that the late great Tim McCarver used to tell about Bob Gibson. Batter called timeout, started to dig in the batter's box like that, and Gibson walked halfway to home plate. Said, "You better big dig it deep enough to bury yourself." <laughs> He'll take care of the rest. The cutter ran down and in, three and one on Soto. Shot of one deck. Soto has one more year left on his contract by the way becomes a free agent after the 2024 season so his future still very much in doubt. Will he be in San Diego long term we'll see. He leads the majors and walks and there's one more two out base runner ahead of Machado. Of course, they went all in again with Manny Machado, who has received in his Padres tenure not one but two $300 million contracts. That's a lot of money. He redid Manny's deal. He was sent to become a free agent after this season, said this spring he was going to opt out. So they said, OK, let's get rid of that contract, and here's a new one. You were making $300 million. How does $350 sound? So he said, I'll take it. <laughs> And he signed up with a new deal, 11 years, $350 million. And hits this one out toward the pool. Jake McCarthy drifting back to the track. It's 4 0 San Diego, a chase. Redeem offers, access exclusive content. Yeah, one more scoop. And much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today and use a napkin.
Ketel Marte leads off the fourth. Didn't go, says Jim Wool. Marte struck out the first time he faced you, Darvish. Well, Darvish, 50 pitches, 31 strikes. He has walked two, he has struck out one. If you look on the inside of his right elbow right there you see a scar that's not uncommon for major league pitchers to have all kinds of zippers on their shoulders and their elbows. Darvish missed the entire 2015 season in the beginning of 2016 after Tommy John surgery back when he was with Texas certainly doesn't seem to have affected him very much. There you see that scar on the inside of the right elbow. And another procedure in 2018 had that right elbow scoped as well. Just some probably routine maintenance at this point for Darvish. Mm -hmm. Darvish will turn 37 years old in August. He just got a new contract as well, six years, $108 million. He signed up through his age 42 season. Marte slams it toward the pool. And that'll get to the wall. Patel Marte rounding second and headed for third. Here's the relay throw when he's got the triple. Well, let's get the party started. Yeah, good start here. Diamondbacks leader and extra base hits. There's one more. Yeah, hanging breaking ball that time up over the heart of the plate. Can tell you got to hit the mistakes. And he mashes this one to right center field. His second triple in a week. 103 miles an hour. Speaking of exit velocity, off the bat of Cattell Marte, leadoff man at third, ahead of Corbin Carroll. Like to splitter in the dirt. Corbin popped out his first time. Game does feel a particular way, not a particularly great way if you're a Diamondback fan, but it's still only 4 0. Yeah. That was the D back's first hit. All right. Leadoff triple. 3 0 on Corbin Carroll. Longoria waiting on deck behind him. It's conference time for the Padres. It's odd to see Darvish fall behind in the count. Five times in this game, he's been behind a Diamondbacks hitter 1 0. Missed with the first pitch. All five of those at bats, he came back to go 1 and 2. Working right back into the count. Back with you tomorrow. Tommy Henry gets the start. First of three against the Kansas City Royals. That game on Valley Sports Arizona. D backs live pregame show at 6 o'clock. Ryan Nelson and Zach Gallen. Will go in the next two games in that series. Long go on deck, 3 0 on Corbin. And there's ball four. Good start. Third walk issued by Darvish. Long go flying out his first time. The start at third base against the right hander today. Got the right guy down there at first if you want to start some pressure. Do you run here down four zip? I do. I mean, I, I just feel that that's how the Diamondbacks are going to achieve success this year. When you get the fast guys on, run them. Put the pressure on the defense. Make them make perfect plays to get you out. One disengage. 
know Nola behind the plate has had issues throwing out attempted base stealers this year. He's only caught two out of 23. May have called for a fastball for just that reason there. A 1-1 on Longoria. Corbin a perfect seven for seven in his stolen base attempts. Long set by Darvish. Carroll holds Longo. Get strike two. Still nothing from Corbin Carroll down there. Sometimes I think it just depends on where Corbin Carroll's weight is on his feet. As he takes his lead off first, he'll go right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. And if he has his weight on his right foot when that ball's delivered, that's when he's more likely to break for second. If he's leaning back toward first base on his left foot, he's probably going to hold right here. Still holding. Longoria sends it out to Tatis. Still chasing this one down. He's got it. That'll get Marte home. Corbin tanks as well. Diamondbacks on the board. It's four to one. Longori gets the run home. Now you've got Carroll at second. One out for Paven Smith, who walked his first time up. That cutter up there, 0 and 1. Corbin gets the start, or I should say, Pavin gets the start at first base today. Kristen Walker got hit on the left forearm of the game last night. X rays were negative. Oh, Manny Machado. He's one of the best there is. You just saw why. That was laced the other way off the bat of Paven Smith, but it's out number two. 100 miles an hour off the bat. Looked like a base hit headed for the left field right there. Paven did everything right. Got a pitch away, stayed on it, barreled it. Unfortunately, Manny right there to take a base hit away. He's going to go down as one of the best ever to play that spot. Need a two out hit from Jake McCarthy here to get that run home from second. Cut this lead in half. They grounded out into a double play the first pitch he saw his first time up. Right now stuck in a one for 27 slide. What are you doing if you're Manny Machado here, Bob? Are you worried about Corbin Carroll with two outs? He's kind of kitty cornered down there at third. Yeah, conventional wisdom would be you're in scoring position at second. There's no real logical reason to try to steal third, but Manny's kind of angled so he can see out of the corner of his eye what's happening at second base. Nice high hop for Kim. They strand that runner at second, but the Diamondbacks get one across after the Marte triple, and after four, they trail it four to one. <laughs> All right, McDermott's nice. nice job. Here we are at Chase Field, the finale of this four game set. Four one lead as Xander Bogart starts us off for the fifth inning against Peter Solomon. A long and short day for Dre Jameson. He had a 43 pitch first inning. And he was done after one 43 pitches for Dre. So Anthony Masevich worked the second and third. Now Peter Solomon on for the fourth and the fifth. Bogarts has walked and flied out 0 for 1. Oh, 
Padres got a sacrifice fly by Jake Cronenworth and a two run double by Matt Carpenter. All those runs coming against Ray Jameson in that first. Bogart skies it to center for Alec Thomas. Carpenter added a sack fly in the third. And that's all the scoring for the Padres. First baseman, Jake Cronenworth. So here is Cronenworth, who had that RBI fly ball in the first, tripled and scored in the third. Pitch right there, sinker at the bottom of the zone, did not get the call that time. Right hander Peter Solomon, 26 years old. Fourth round pick out of Notre Dame by the Astros back in 2017. Lost two years of his development in the minor leagues. The year after he was drafted had Tommy John surgery, missed all of 2020 during the COVID shutdown. Rojas has it from the edge of the grass. Two down in the fifth. Let's get this word from 72 Soul. Hey baseball fans, sell your home in eight days or less for thousands more. Get our price for your home today only at 72sold.com. Here is Matt Carpenter. Carpenter's knocked in three runs. Is that a big series? By the way, BB, this is a big day here for all of us on the broadcast side of Diamondbacks baseball. There is Dennis Lamb, star of the Dennis Lamb Show. And we want to give you and Tony Dennis a big, very happy 35th anniversary today. Nice. It's a big day. We're surrounded by Lambs here. <laughs> we run the four corners offense. And uh, congratulations to you and Tony. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. More than it's been 35 years, and they've been more than wonderful. And as Dennis Lamb star uh -oh. of the Dennis Lamb show uh oh is right McCarthy to the wall and that one's gone Carpenter's having a big series his second home run here and it's five to one San Diego that's baseball Padres come rolling into Chase Field and you look up and down their lineup Tatis Soto Machado Bogarts. And Matt Carpenter, the guy doing big damage in this series. And he's knocked in four. There are five runs today. Line drive that barely cleared the fence out there in right field. No chance for Jake McCarthy that time. However, a fan did make a nice play. Two run double, sack fly, solo homer for Carpenter. Here's Hassan Kim. On the corner for a strike. Kim now in his third season with the Padres, played seven years in the KBO. There's a power hitting shortstop there, curveballs there, it's two and two. This guy's been a really good fit in their whole mix, plays all over the field, plays it really well. Great defense no matter where you put it. A big hit now and again had a walk off homer earlier this year to beat the Diamondbacks at Petco Park. And early going this season it seems like Kim has had issues dealing with velocity. Most of the big hits that he's had this season have come on off speed pitches that stayed in the strike zone. Scoop that one out behind shortstop Nick Ahmed calling for it. 
Padres get one more the third of the year for Matt Carpenter his second home run in this series makes it five to one San Diego. Do you buy Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Steve Berthew, Bob Brindley, Jody Jackson, Brandon Webb here with you. Valley Sports Arizona's coverage of Diamondback baseball continues. Alec Thomas leads off the home half of the fifth inning. So far, you Darvish has given up only one hit. They could tell Marte triple that led off the fourth. Marte scored on an Evan Longoria sacrifice fly. That's been all the offense so far. Darvish has walked three. And after striking out a dozen Brewers last Sunday, has only one strikeout so far today. Darvish was outstanding against Milwaukee his last time out. Huh? But got stuck with a 1 0. Going offensively against Wade Miley and the Brewers. He has hit the 100 pitch mark, you Darvish, in each of his last two starts. Right now he's at 70 pitches, 43 for strikes. Won 16 games with San Diego last year, you Darvish. And it was his highest win total since his rookie season with the Texas Rangers more than a decade ago. And after coming over from Japan, where he was, of course, a star pitcher for the Nippon Ham Fighters. Nice card on the deck for Bob Melvin to have. Two and two on Alec Thomas. Easy hop for Kim at second as we check in with Jody. Hi guys, today I got a chance to catch up with some of the guys on the IL in the clubhouse. And one player that I saw was outfielder Kyle Lewis. He's been on the IL with an illness, and we don't have a lot of details to share about that. But saw him in the clubhouse. He looks well. He's going to start some baseball activities, you know, and he's fought through so many injuries in his career, had this fresh start with the D backs, the home run in LA. This latest stint on the IL has certainly cost him some time, but again. It's a Saw him, seems to be doing okay. He was smiling, which was a good thing to see, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And a tremendous spring, Kyle Lewis won an opening day roster spot. Nick Ahmed, the start at shortstop today. Sweeper, one and two. Boy, that pitch has become popular. It's amazing how after hundred something years of baseball, suddenly everybody has discovered there's a new pitch. How does that even happen? Yeah, we talked about it the other day back when I played. Uh, you didn't want to throw a sweeper. Oh, it's flat. It's off speed. It ends up in the middle of the strike zone. Can't you get some downward movement on that pitch? Oh, low strike. That was another sweeper. And Darvish gets his second strikeout as Ahmed is rung up on a low strike three. Right. Austin Nola is pretty good about framing pitches, but uh, he had to pull that one back up several inches to get it into the strike zone, but they do get the call. Two down for Jose Herrera, who walked his first time. You would think by now. Oh, but uh, not so much. I'm being told that this uh, half inning, nine pitches thrown by Darvish, eight of them have been sweepers. That's odd. You know, you, as a pitcher, you don't want to fall into any patterns, but see Darvish go out there and throw that many sweepers in this inning. When you've got 18 pitches at your disposal. <laughs> One, two. Calling for everything. We're going to run a buttons on that pitch com. I need two transmitters. They got that hard sinker at 96. Darvish still throws hard and never. Pitched seven years with Nippon Ham in the Pacific League. He was twice league MVP. 0 2. 
Darvish's record in Japan was 93 wins, 38 losses. His career ERA there was 1.99. Oh, goodness. Pretty good. He's got three strikeouts and after five holds a five to one lead. Tarius Ken Griffey Jr. AI and um, like Brian Westbrook. Albert Pujols. I mean the first one the most was Kobe Bryant. Derek Jeter and Mark McGuire were my guys. Who is your favorite athlete? Always get similar answers. Right there, you saw Cattell Marte go with Jose Reyes. Of course, Christian Walker went with some Philly guys, Westbrook and Allen Iverson. Good time up there at the PCH uh, playground here at the ballpark. The Sandlot, sponsored by Phoenix Children's Hospital. The slide kind of looked like one of Darvish's pitches. <laughs> right? <laughs> He'll have a new one, the slide pitch, in the next <laughs> inning. Grisham leads off the sixth against Peter Solomon. It is remarkable to do a lot of those interviews and almost every baseball player of this generation when you ask them who is your favorite player growing up any sport it's remarkable how many say Kobe Bryant. Yeah. That's it's almost universal. You get a lot of Griffey's if you were a very baseball centric kid growing up but boy. Kobe Bryant that that just really really strikes a chord with a lot of youngsters. This is it well deep to center. Alec Thomas under the home run porch has got just enough room. Let's get this message from Gila River Resorts and Casino. Seek a career. This is your moment. Join us. Who was your guy coming up? Oh, wait, what was the name of the guy on the Indians? Uh, well, uh, Woody Held. Woody Held, that's my favorite but one. Vic Davalio was probably my guy. He came to the Indians and he, he played the game like I'd never seen before. He could run like the wind, he'd bunt, he'd slap the ball around. He was a lot of fun to watch, so I kind of uh, was drawn to Vic Davalio. Here's Longoria, third, they retire Nola. But weren't you at one point the president of the Woody Held fan club? I was actually the vice president. Oh, I see. Demoted, huh? Of the Tito Francona John Romano fan club. <laughs> so many clubs they get them mixed up. There were only two members. <laughs> the guy that lived across the street from me, and he was the president, I was the vice president. You were a strong second. <laughs> Tatis. The Boo Birds are out now. How about you? Oh, well, Don Money. I got to that. meet my guy, Don oh, yeah. Money, whose uh, grandson played for the Diamondbacks last year, Buddy Kennedy. Don and the whole family were up in our booth. I remember going one time to a, as a youngster, going to a Brewer game at County Stadium, and the Brewers had a player named Bob Coluccio who played the outfield. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bob Coluccio, uh, if you look up the numbers, had a good rookie year, and then after that, not so much. They had a lot of guys like that back in the day. A one, two, three, six. Short work of the Padres. Got some work to do here. Down five to one. It's our T-Mobile coverage cam. He was burning out there to get that second base and run it back. Uh, he was even fast carrying the base back. I mean, when he ran from the right field corner to second base, he was flying. He got the biggest ovation we've had today. <laughs> nice going. Josh Rojas starts off the sixth against you, Darvish. Darvish has given up only one hit to this point. Could tell Marte's triple that led off the fourth came home on an Evan Longoria sacrifice fly. That's been all the offense. Darvish has walked three and struck out three. And has been in near complete command since the get go. Now going into this inning, Darvish had thrown 81 pitches, 19 four seam fastballs, 18 sweepers, 14 sliders, seven curves, seven cutters, four sinkers. Got it. So just go look for that. Yeah, go look for that. <laughs> Sit on one of those. That's right. <laughs> Sit on it, Potsy. <laughs> Two and one. All right, get something started. He's already walked three behind on Rojas, three and one with Marte, who's got their only hit on deck behind him.
Josh three hits three RBIs in this series. He's also struck out five times. He was a little aggressive up there last night. Three punch outs in his last three at bats. Old Cal three and two. Ooh, ouch. Got a big chunk of the home plate umpire that time. Mike Malinsky going to walk that off. Rojas will walk to first, and here comes Cattell trying to get back in this thing with Darvish approaching 90 pitches. Ooh, right biceps that time. I don't believe he has any protection in that particular area, which is what usually happens. You get hit where you don't have any pattern. And oh, by the way, the pitch was 92 miles an hour. Ooh. Start the timer. There's the universal sign for let's go. Marte tripled and scored to start the fourth. He's one for two. This is a manufacturer runs kind of club, at least that's the way it seems to be designed. The Diamondbacks project they might be that, but. After all, they are 25th in the majors in home runs. They got to get some base runners here. As many as they can collect, they are in the lower third of the majors in terms of on base percentage for a team. And so base runners have been few and far between. If you're going to start the Jets and have the track meet, you got to have somebody in the starting blocks. Yep. The right guy in the starting blocks. We talked about it earlier when Herrera and Pavin Smith had drawn the two base on balls. If there's been an issue with the offense to this point, it's not been scoring. Obviously, they're having a good year, two over 500, but it's been the patience. They are dead last in the major leagues and walks as a team. So they have drawn four bases on balls today, but to this point, none have scored. So they've been getting some walks, just not the hits they need afterwards. And Darvish has taken care of that. That's four strikeouts. Tell completely fooled by this pitch. He's been really swinging the bat well, seeing the ball well, swinging at good pitches. That time just got fooled by the Darvish delivery. Second time he has struck out against Darvish today. Here's Corbin who has popped up and walked. And Corbin's base on balls was an encouraging sign. He'd drawn only three walks all year coming into today. That's in more than 80 plate appearances, which seems odd for him. And even he has admitted he's been expanding the zone a little bit more than he'd like to these days. And unfortunately for Corbin, uh, the umpire occasionally expands the zone when he's at the plate. He's been the recipient of some really questionable strike three calls. Yeah, that's out there on the interweb someplace. Now look the Diamondbacks have trailed ever since the top of the first when they got three against Jameson but they haven't put any pressure on Darvis they've had opportunities with base runners. We're in Honeywell the right hander with Darvish approaching 100 pitches starts to get loose. That's a base hit for Corbin Carroll Rojas will head for third. There on the corners with one out and here comes Longo. Just the second hit for the Diamondbacks. Looks like Darvish's needle might be getting a little low. Well, Longo has knocked in their only run, a sack fly in the fourth after the Marte triple. We've got some lens problems down there at first base. Ruben the Ebla out to the mound, the pitching coach for the Padres. Corbin's got to get those contacts in there. And while we have a moment, let's get this message from Global Credit Union. At Global Credit Union, benefits like no fee accounts and early payday keep you moving forward on your financial journey. Global Credit Union. On we go, Arizona. 
this is ongoing. Max Esposito going to have to come out and help Corbin a bit here. It's tough to get that lens back in when you've got pine tar on your hands. <laughs> It'll get in and never come out again. Yeah. Been there, done that a few times. Oh, yeah. Well, we want to make sure he sees all the bases as he scores on this extra base hit off the bat of Evan Longoria. I like where he heads at, yeah. kid. Longo's got a chance to make this a game again right here with one swing. Sometimes it just doesn't want to get in there. Nope. I know they check pitchers now for uh, foreign <laughs> substances. I don't know if you do they check for saline solution. <laughs> well, here we go. Diamondbacks have an opportunity to make it a ball game again. Rojas is at third. Corbin and his contact lens down there at first. And here is Longoria, who has flied out twice, once to drive it a run. Darvish is at 95 pitches. There's activity in the Padre bullpen. Sinker in there. Rojas at third, Carroll's at first. Diamondbacks have not attempted to put any pressure on Darvish on the base path today. They have trailed since the top of the first three nothing. It's now five to one. Corbin takes off. No throw from Nola. Stolen base number eight. And now a base hit can drive in two. You see a lot of teams do this. They, they almost concede that stolen base. They don't want to risk an errant throw to second base and let that runner score from third. So Corbin gets his eighth stolen base without being caught this year. Good RBI chance for Longo. Ball and a strike. Popped up. Get out. It wants to get to the dugout. It needs to get to the dugout. And it gets to the dugout. Sometimes you just got to talk to him. That's baby. right. They don't always listen, but <laughs> it sure helps. Get down, ball. Ninety-ninth pitch from you, Darvish, on the way. A disengagement for Darvish. He had an issue with that last week. And there's the timeout for Longoria. So the cat and mouse game is on as much as the rules will allow here. I kind of like that there. Eh? Darvish stepped off for a reason. He wasn't feeling great, so Longo might extend that little moment. Darvish gets the sweeper, gets the strikeout. He's fired up. He's punched out five now. There are two outs in the sixth. I mentioned Mark Grant doing Padres TV with Don Orsillo next door to us, and he said that sweeper is basically what used to be called a slurve. Yeah. Darvish throws it the same way he used to throw the slurve, that lateral movement, kind of a flat curve ball. 
100 pitches, 63 strikes. He has walked four, struck out five. Here's Paven Smith. You never anticipate a fastball in the dirt. Especially if you're a catcher. Yeah. I mean, breaking ball, splitter, change up, curve, slider, whatever, you always anticipate it might end up in the dirt. But a major league pitcher, you would expect to be able to throw his fastball all the way to the plate in the air. Doesn't seem unreasonable at this level. Well. Darter stretching out that right leg a little bit, and I don't know if it's a cramp or. Yeah. Bob so. Melvin is out to the mound. He's got a trainer in tow. It's it's not hard to spot. You know, when you watch a guy pitch 30 times a season, you you become very aware of his mechanics on the mound and what he does when he's feeling good, what he does when he's not feeling good, and. You could see right there immediately Darvish with that right leg something went sideways and pretty easy to recognize that time. Of course dehydration pitching yeah. here in Arizona always a concern Darvish has been at the 100 pitch mark each of his last two starts and that's going to be it he's done at 102. Bob Melvin taking no chances so in the middle of this at bat Darvish will leave with a five to one lead. One and two outs in the sixth inning. And the right hander Brent Honeywell will inherit a 2 0 count on Paven Smith. It's the Global Credit Union called at the bullpen. Honeywell worked two scoreless innings here Thursday in the opener and was the winning pitcher in that game. How about this, partner? Brent Honeywell went to school at Franklin County High School in Royston, Georgia. They had one other major leaguer come out of that high school. Ty Cobb. Ah. <laughs> it was a little bit of a, a gap between the two big leaguers coming out of high school. Once a century, they turn out a good one. <laughs> Rojas is at third. Carroll is at second with two outs. Diamondbacks have managed only two hits so far. They trail it five to one. And Pavin Smith steps back in with a count of two balls and no strikes. It's three and zero. Oh, Jake McCarthy. He's on deck. Mm -hmm. All right, this is the moment right here. They're loaded now. We've been waiting for Jake McCarthy to get that big hit, and he's got his opportunity right in front of him here. Darvish is charged with that base on balls, by the way, if you're scoring with us at home. Here is Jake, who is 0 for 2. He has grounded out twice, stuck in a 1 for 28 slide. Bases full and two outs. Jake has twice grounded out to the right side, once into a double play. Rojas at third, Carroll's at second, Paven Smith at first. Jake had that two hit game against the Dodgers here earlier this month. That was a Chase Field Easter Sunday. Since then, though, just not been able to get it going. And what a moment this would be to bust out. Side did Honeywell and it's two and two. Screwball. Hey, he learned that pitch from his father. 
father, Brent Sr., was a cousin to Mike Marshall, the 1974 uh -oh. Cy Young winner who threw a screwball. Mike Marshall taught it to Brent Sr., Brett Sr. taught it to this Brett Honeywell. How often are you up there with two strikes and the bases full sitting on a screwball? Yeah, not much. So here it is on three and two. Find a gap right here. Come on, Jake. Diamondbacks have been out hit six to two. They trail at five one. Mike Malinsky rings him up. Honeywell leaves him loaded. It stays 5 1 San Diego. Peter Solomon out there for his fourth inning in relief. And Juan Soto starts us off with the San Diego seventh. Hard to believe that Juan Soto was only 24 years old. Seems like he's been in the league for 10 years. <laughs> certainly feels that way for opposing pitchers. Right? He's aged a few, certainly. Hang on. From Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, Manny Machado on deck behind him. How's this for a 2 3 and 4? Soto, Machado, Bogarts. Soto, who's leading the world in walks, has another one his second today, and the leadoff man's aboard. Sanderson Ford bullpen, the left-hander, Joe Mantiply. Andy Machado did not play. In the ball game here last night. Back in there today, had some back soreness. Bob Melvin said he didn't want Machado playing four days on the turf here at Chase Field if he's had some minor back pain. Brent Strom are going to pay Peter Solomon a visit with Mantiply warming up. Getting back to Soto for just a moment. You wonder if and when the Padre fans are going to ask Soto to swing the bat. <laughs> I remember Joey Votto in Cincinnati. The fans used to get on him about taking walks with runners in scoring position. Same thing for Frank Thomas, the big herd in Chicago with the White Sox. Yeah, the fans want to see their stars swing the bat, drive the ball, and get hits and home runs, but Soto just refuses to go out of his zone. He's a tremendously disciplined hitter. Well, if he doesn't want to swing, Bob Melvin has a few other guys that will. Yeah. So they've got it covered either way. Including this guy, Machado. Here is the surprising stat of the day Manny Machado's OPS against right hand pitchers. OPS on base percentage plus slugging. It's 418. That's the second lowest mark in the major leagues behind only Milwaukee's Joey Weimer. Double play ball here. Rojas for one. I'm in. Pretty. Some fast footwork by Nick as we get this word from Jack in the Box. Remember, two tacos a day keeps the hangry away. Download the Jack app and get them for 99 cents. Shortstop, Xander Bogarts. Two down for Bogarts, who is 0 for 2. Bogarts walked and scored in that three run San Diego first inning. So he has reached base safely in all 24 games this year. The only player in the majors to do that. It has been money well spent so far, certainly for the Padres. $280 million. After 10 years with the Red Sox. Four times an All Star, five times a Silver Slugger winner at shortstop. Ah. 
Peter Solomon has done a good job here. He's given up only one run. That was the Carpenter homer in the fifth. Trying to get Tour Lovello four innings of long relief. After Misevich worked the second and third. A long first for Dre Jamison. He threw 43 pitches today in the first inning and lasted only one. Second walk in the inning for Solomon. Cronenworth is the hitter. They've got the lefty Mantiply ready to go, and here comes the skipper tour of the Velo. That'll do it for Peter Solomon. We'll take a break from Chase Field back in a moment on Valley Sports Arizona. The swimmer there, look at her go. <laughs> 5-1 San Diego leads. Don't miss an exclusive painting experience at Chase Field. Sunday, May 7th, our game against the Nationals. Every ticket package to our paint at the park includes a game ticket, food, and your artwork to take home. Like Bob Brenly did. Visit dbacks.com slash paint for tickets. Uh, this is an original Brenly. This is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite up to your standard. I like how you have a big chocolate chip cookie as the moon. You like that? Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I, I didn't get the perspective quite right on the uh, on the river there. It's supposed to get wider as it comes toward you, but uh, that was my first try. Thank you for your interpretation. <laughs> Anthem fly on to face Jake Cronenworth, who has triple to knock in a run. Yeah, paint at the park. That's become a very popular yeah. event here. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Nice social activity. May 7th. That's a Sunday. Diamondbacks and Nationals. Cronenworth sends one toward the pool. And that'll bounce off the wall. Bogart's coming around with a sixth San Diego run. Jake Cronenworth has tripled and now doubled. A tough break for the D-backs right there. Looked like that ball was going to hop up and over the fence out there in front of the pool, but unfortunately it hit and stayed in play, which allowed Bogarts to come all the way around and score from first. Here comes Matt Carpenter who's had a big series and a home run in the opener. And another one, his last time up. This is in the fifth inning off Peter Solomon. Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Yeah, did it without a bat. Hit a 368. <laughs> There's a line drive over the wall in right field. Carpenter's had a terrific series. Homered off Ryan Nelson in the opener on Thursday. Last night doubled off in center's first time up. And here today, hit a two-run double off that wall in center, drove it a run with a sack fly, then hit that homer. He's knocked in four of the Padres' six runs today. There's Morgan Burkhart. Coaching at first base. He's filling in on Bob, uh, Bob Melvin's staff today. Morgan Burkhart, or as he's known back in Boston, Morgan Burkhart. Something of a once a Red Sox legend. He was an independent guy. He played everywhere. Played in the Mexican League, played in Japan, played independent ball, and now here he is coaching in the big leagues. That'll get to the wall and left. Matt Carpenter's big series continues. Back to back RBI doubles for the Padres. Center cut 91 that time a little bit away from Carpenter. I mentioned the other day he rarely hits the ball that direction but we've seen him go deep to center field a couple of times for extra base hits and that time split the gap in left center. Pair of RBI doubles against Joe Mantiply. Now it's Hassan Kim seven runs eight hits for San Diego. Yeah, Morgan Burkhart started his professional career in independent ball with the Richmond Roosters in the Frontier League. He played four years there before he finally got a big league deal. He signed with Boston in the late 90s. And he had some good years with the Red Sox. 
in their system and for a while he was with Kansas City then played in the Mexican leagues for a long time. I mean he is a well traveled baseball lifer. Mm -hmm. Morgan Burkhart. One and two on Hassan Kim. Foul at third. Well, he jumped on that sinker. Turned on it. And they managed to keep Kim relatively quiet in this series, a single and a walk. Otherwise, he's been chasing a lot of bad pitches, swinging at a lot of fastballs, and coming up empty. Sanderson Ford bullpen, right hander Jose Ruiz getting loose. Carpenter with four plate appearances in this game, at least one RBI in every plate appearance. What's that, huh? Driven in five of their seven. Two run double, sacrifice fly, home run, RBI double. And Antiply gets Kim, but the Padres get two more, and as we stretch, the Diamondbacks trail it seven to one. On the mound for him, you Darvish just appeared to run out of gas a little bit, but boy, was he good early. A lot of soft contact, a lot of strikeouts using all of his pitches. Came out with what appeared to be a right leg injury of some kind. I think Bob Melvin was about ready to pull the plug anyway. But there's, they haven't lost their enthusiasm. I'd say they haven't lost their enthusiasm. What? There, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Great having him at the ballpark today. Uh oh, face rake. <laughs> Get a couple guys on there and see what happens. Come on. Alec Thomas, yeah, keep him yelling like that. Alec is grounded out twice. He leads off the seventh against Brent Honeywell. And Alec gets it up in the air toward the pool. Alec Thomas sends one out of here. Four hundred twenty two feet the second this year for Alec Thomas and it's seven to two. Our Chaz Roberts air conditioning and plumbing cool play of the game a ninety three mile an hour heater just above the top of the strike zone and Alec tomahawks it out of here over the pool in right center. If you look up the average exit velocities consistent hard hit percentage Alec Thomas is at the very top of the charts for the Diamondbacks. He's hit the ball hard all year long. Excuse me, check swing foul off the bat of Nick Ahmed. That's a jumbo jack for Alec and you. Free jumbo jack tomorrow with Jack in the Box with a large drink purchase. Alec had a long one in St. Louis the other day. Nick Ahmed trying to get on the board and say goodbye to that one. Oh boy! That'll give him something to cheer about. First to the air for Nick. They go back to back in the seventh. Don't go away just yet. Oh, that's the old cement mixer breaking ball. Just spins and spins and spins and never takes the break. And Nick just mashed it to left field. Yeah, he did. Ooh. Jose Herrera. Diamondbacks have sprung to life here. Jose has walked and struck out. 
I think it was your inspirational painting that did it. Uh, it quite possibly. Well, that's the power of art. <laughs> Ruben Ambler, the pitching coach, trying to paint a new picture for the Padres. Ooh. Either that or it was my stick figure drawing. Don't forget dbacks.com for your tickets. Kansas City Royals and Bobby Witt Jr. come in here tomorrow for the start of a three game series. Tommy Henry makes his season debut for the Diamondbacks against right hander Brad Keller. And then Ryan Nelson Tuesday night. Zach Gallen is back at it on a Wednesday getaway day game. 12 40 start Wednesday. dbacks.com for tickets. Diamondbacks and the Royals. Tim Hill, well, it's a rule. It's, it's a, a rule. Padre game. Tim Hill must appear in the game at some point. <laughs> That's in the bylaws. 2 and 0 on Jose Herrera. Staff points out that the Diamondbacks scored one run on the first 109 pitches in this game. They've scored two runs on the last three. <laughs> Got to pick your spots. What a game! Two and two on Jose. So Tapper back to the mound. Honeywell snags it, and that's the first out in the seventh. And now the lineup turns over. Here's Rojas over two with a base on ball. Josh, three hits, three RBIs in the series. Well, Honeywell's trying to live above the belt. It's not working out for him so far. Now we showed you Tim Hill, the left-hander, warming up in the Padres bullpen. Uh, Torrey does have some right-handed bats available off the bench today. Should Bob Melvin decide to go to the lefty? Got Christian Walker, Gabriel Moreno, Lourdes Gurriel, and the switch hitter Geraldo Perdomo. Yeah, guys who would normally be in the starting lineup against a right-hander like you, Darvish, but we had to get some other guys in there like Ahmed Longoria, and it's certainly paid off for Nick with that last home run. And Longo has an RBI. No loss. They had three balls and one strike. Marte on deck. That's a good 3 1 pitch to take a rip at right there. Instead, it's punched to shortstop. Short hop by Bogarts. Two down. The tail Marte had for a long time their only hit a triple to start the fourth came home on the Longoria sack fly and that was their only run. Up until the back to back homers by Thomas and Ahmed. Look out Dave McKay. Mike Malinsky not happy with the music selection there. <laughs> and now we'll start the timer. Play the hits. Center field. Grisham. He can get to most of them. And he's got that one. Thomas and Ahmed go back to back at 7 3 as we head to the eighth. For a comeback down 7 3 in the eighth inning, it's the Gila River Resorts and Casinos game summary. Padres DH Matt Carpenter has done a lot of damage here. Three for three. The home run is doubled twice. He's knocked in five of their seven runs. Diamondbacks have made it a ball game again. Back to back homers in the seventh by Alec Thomas and Nick Ahmed. And now here is the right hander Jose Ruiz to start the eighth inning. It's the Global Credit Union call to the bullpen. 
Daniel Ruiz in game one of this series pitched the final inning of the ball game walked the leadoff man. He was caught stealing at second base gave up a single and then got two quick outs after that. Eight nine and one due up for San Diego Grisham Nola and Tatis. Frank Grisham the center fielder has walked he's 0 for 2. A lot of the Padres have copied your trademark mustache from your playing days. Got some good looking uh, facial hair on some of your baseball cards. <laughs> now, the real valuable card, I have one that I did not have a mustache. I think it was 1983, maybe. Now, that's not like a big deal where you, they set up a night. Now, nowadays, they'll set up like a background. They'll bring in a professional photographer, and you, you sit down. You take all these beauty shots. No. In, the, in your day, they just grabbed you and right threw you up against the wall and yeah. took the photo. Coming out of the dugout for batting practice, they'd snap a shot real quick. And rules foul. Yeah, they got me at Wrigley Field one time. <laughs> was it it had been a late night the night before. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, that's the one they used on the card. Oh, those guys. I actually have a, a semi valuable card that my name was misspelled. In the, Get it, in the first printing, they put an extra E at the end, L E Y, which a lot of people do. And yeah. after the first printing, they corrected it and issued some more cards. But there's some B R E N L E Y cards floating around. When right that there. happens, that's a big deal in the baseball oh, sure, card world. Sure. So, do you have any of those? Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. Buried in a coffee can somewhere. In a bank vault. In the backyard. <laughs> One and two. Of course, some guys are tricky. I, I the guys who would be, uh, you know, they were right-handed hitters, and then they would mm -hmm. bat left-handed for their baseball card and see if anybody noticed. Stuff like that used to happen all yep. the time. Sometimes a pitcher would wear the glove on the other hand, you know, look like a lefty when in reality he's a righty. Remember there was a, a guy who pitched for the Phillies Lowell Palmer who pitched in the early 70s who always wore sunglasses on his baseball. Oh, card. Very cool. That was a nice uh, set the 1970s set. Then there's the Billy Ripken car. Well there's uh, fortunately we're out of time. <laughs> that didn't work out so well. I remember that I liked the, when I was a kid the coins remember the coins tops came out in the early 70s mm -hmm. with a set of coins that were very cool. As Ruiz that's a 98 mile an hour fastball by Grisham they had the coins then they had the big cardboard cards that were like almost not quite eight by tens. Mm -hmm. Big ones. You sure it was coins or just that hard gum that they used to put? In <laughs> right. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. <laughs> no, they were nice metal coins. They had photos on them. Just mm. have a bunch of those. Austin Nola for three. And then, uh, of course, when you were a kid, Fleer used to come out with a set of cards, and they had the set of uh, the stickers, and he'd stick them all over everything, and mom would yell at you. <laughs> He's got power stuff. Strike out of Grisham, 0 2 on Nolan. Talking about cards, trading cards. Uh, back in the day, way back in the day, I used to go to my grandparents' house on the weekend and they used to put cards on the back of the grape nuts box. Oh, yeah. And you, you know, you'd have to cut them out. They used to do that with Twinkies too. Yep. Hostess would have a set. And my grandmother saved every one of those. Nice. To give to me. Sure. Put them in the back of the shoebox. Did you put them in the uh, spokes of the bike? Oh yeah. Uh, right. The clothespin. Let's follow it third. A chance for Bruce Weinsoff down there. Oh, Bruce. Uh, yeah, well. 
sometimes you just have to beat the ball. Let's take a look, get a look at Bruce Weinsoff in action here. Ooh, tough angle. Oh, well, certain things need protection. Yes, indeed. One and two. You're right, that was a tough angle in Bruce's defense. Had a hot plate Harrison side in here the other day, and it was good to see hot plate doing his usual pregame routine. Bruce has his uh, Mr. Miyagi wax on, wax off thing, but uh, hot plate goes through a stretching and sprinting routine that is uh, second to none, frankly. Has to stay ready. Yeah, because he heats up fast. You know, the dugout is barking a little bit back there. Tatis on deck, full count three and two on the catcher Austin Nola. Can go to power change up two batters two strikeouts. Well, Ruiz got good stuff if he keeps it in and around the strike zone he can be really tough good change up that time down in the zone gets no little chase. Here is Tatis. I think he has handled this, all this stuff as well as anyone could expect. And especially that positive PED test. He's going to hear some boo birds, but he absolutely owned it. Said it was a stupid mistake, no excuses, did not appeal, took his medicine. Three surgeries last year, two on that fractured left wrist after the motorcycle accident, another on that left shoulder. Uh, doesn't look like the shoulder's bothering him anymore. What a rip right there. Remember that shoulder used to pop in and out all the mm -hmm. time. It was a constant problem and they tried everything they could to not have him have surgery and miss a whole season. But since he was suspended anyway they decided well look let's go have that surgery and get it done. And that's what they did last September. One two. Didn't go Nate Tomlinson. Break the ball way off the plate outside. Yeah, it looked like he was able to check. Straight up in the air. Nick Ahmed behind second. Impressive eighth inning for Jose Ruiz. Lefty Tim Hill on his way in because that's the rule. <laughs> Shirt field passes are on sale now at dbacks.com slash Cinco. Coming up on May 5th, Diamondbacks and the Nationals. Well, for the third time in four games in this series, here is the left-hander Tim Hill. He worked the eighth inning of the ball game last night and got three outs on 12 pitches. It's the Global Credit Union call to the bullpen. Corbin has walked, singled, and stolen a base. One for two. D backs have been out, hit eight to four. They trail at seven three. That stays fair up the line. It bounces toward the corner. Soto's got it. Carroll's got the double. Good start to the eighth. Corbin aboard for the third time today. Not sure if it was by design or by necessity, but he really let that ball get deep into the hitting zone that time. Shoots it right down that third baseline. Boy, and anything that's not hit directly at an outfielder is probably going to be extra bases for Corbin Carroll. Diamondbacks have had chances to get back in this game. They've left some runners on base here. A leadoff double ahead of Evan Longoria. Longo struck out his last time up against you Darvish with a couple of runners on. He drove in a run in the fourth with a sacrifice fly. 
at the second baseman Kim orbit into third and there's one out. Looks like we're going to get a pinch hitter here for Paven Smith one of those right hand bats Bob that you mentioned coming off the bench. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. will bat for Paven. The easy move would that be have Christian Walker hit here and stay in the game and play first base. But if you get Gurriel on base, you could then hit Christian Walker for either Jake McCarthy or Alec Thomas a little farther down in the lineup. So Torrey just looking for somebody else to get on base here. Set up a big inning. Lourdes has four hits, couple of RBIs in the series. Batting for Paven Smith against the lefty Hill. You may remember our keys to the game were walk for the D-backs offense, don't walk for the D-backs pitching. Well, today the Diamondbacks offensively have drawn five walks. However, none of them have scored. The Padres have drawn six walks. Three of them came around to score. Well, this will get a run home. Bogarts cleans it up. Nice scoop up Cronerworth on the other end. Carroll scores, and it's a seven to four ball game, but now the bases are empty with two outs. So Jake McCarthy will take the at bat against Hill. Been a tough day for Jake. He is 0 for 3. Grounded out twice, once into a double play. Struck out looking with the bases full his last time up. McCarthy slams one toward the pool. Jake McCarthy. That's gone. That'll get him going. His first of the year. And the Diamondbacks aren't done yet. It had been a one for 29 stretch for Jake. Give him a hug. <laughs> Boy, if you make solid contact against Tim Hill as a left-handed hitter, you've really earned that home run. Looked like a breaking ball that hung up over the inside part of the plate. Just into the pool area. Alec Thomas homered his last time up. It's 7-5 now. D-backs with two in the seventh. Now two more here in the eighth. Alex Homer, his second of the year, came against Brent Honeywell. First this season. Must be the new haircut. Must be. Hill gets the strikeout. Diamondbacks get two more. Dave uh, McCarthy's first makes it 7 5. That's a scratch back here and there. It's 7 to 5. As we start the ninth inning, the big boys coming up for the Padres, though. Juan Soto, Manny Machoto, Xander Bogarts. Here is Kevin Ginkle answering the Global Credit Union call to the bullpen. Ginkle. Appeared in the ball game last night, worked a scoreless ninth inning through 15 pitches. Could use a repeat performance today. A little momentum there for the Diamondbacks in that eighth inning. Mortis Gurriel Jr. takes over at first base for Paven Smith. Well, it'll be a big hurdle to jump over here if they can get a zero on the board in this inning. Get up in the home half, down only two. Soto has walked twice, singled, and scored a run.
took a rip, a high fastball. 0 and 2. Wasn't looking to walk right there, that's for New. sure. New. Hilti heater at 96. As we've seen with Kevin Kinkle this year, the crouch has been modified somewhat, not nearly as dramatic as it used to be for Kevin. It's still there, just kind of a baby one. Mm -hmm. It used to go all the way down. Kevin Gingles built like somebody's defensive end. I mean, he's a big dude out there. 6'4, 235 pounds. And he blows away Soto. Got the slider up. Third baseman, Manny Machado. Manny Machado. I mentioned a little bit of momentum in that bottom half of the eighth inning for the Diamondbacks pushing across a couple of runs. Now, if you can put a quick one, two, three inning on the Padres and get your team back in there, you might be able to take advantage of that momentum. Remember, Josh Hader pitched in the ball game last night. He got the save Thursday in the opener. That was number six. Got saved number seven last night. He's back up there again today. Hader threw 16 pitches in the ball game last night. Machado has just one hit in the series, a single in the second. Three and zero with Bogarts waiting behind him on deck. Seven runs, eight hits for San Diego. Five runs, six hits for the Diamondbacks. Carpenter has homered for the Padres. Thomas, Ahmed, and McCarthy have homered for the Diamondbacks. That's yours. Oh, close. Getting closer. <laughs> for some reason, you always know when those come off the bat right away. Check the angle, right? See what Kevin's got here on three and two. Popped up. Foul ground. Guriel wants it. Two outs. Diamondbacks in the home half will have Ahmed, Herrera, and Rojas do up eight, nine, and one. You've got Moreno, Walker, and Perdomo as available pinch hitters on the bench. Although we're not sure about Christian's availability. He was hit by pitch in the ball game last night, but he's supposed to be okay. Here is Bogarts, who has walked twice and flat out twice. Christian was hit by a pitch in his last at bat last night was icing it down after the game they did take some x-rays he said they were negative appears to be OK. Doesn't look like he's preparing to pinch yeah, hit right it now. Sure doesn't look like he's getting ready for a possible pinch hit at bat still has a hoodie on the wrap on that left arm you can see some kind of a mechanical device underneath the sleeve there on his forearm. Yeah that's right where he got plunked. That was in the eighth inning last night against Tim Hill. Well, you combine that hit by pitch last night from Hill with the fact that Christian Walker's 0 for 6 with four strikeouts against Josh Hader. He might not have been used in this situation anyway. Isn't everyone 0 for 6 against Tim? Pretty much. A backswing caught Jose. Boy, he's had a rough time back there lately. Two and two on Bogarts. This would be an impressive outing here for Kevin. If he can get Soto, Machado, and Bogarts, one, two, three, get us to the home half of the ninth. Cronenworth would be next, left hand batter. He's had a good day. He's doubled and tripled, knocked in two runs. Two and two on the Padre shortstop. That 
Evans, a tapper to second, well off the bag at first as Guriel got to hurry up, and they get him at first, says Nate Tomlinson. Ginkle had to hustle over. Padres do not have a challenge, and that'll do it. A 1 2 3 9 for Ginkle, who got there just in time. Bottom nine all the way. On from the Padre bullpen, looking for a save. He got save number six here on 10 pitches Thursday night. Got save number seven last night on 16 pitches. Here he is one more time. It's the Global Credit Union called the bullpen. We talked about Josh Hader last night when he was growing up. He wanted to be a catcher, and then they realized he was left-handed, and that probably wasn't going to work. I have a new staff member, by the way. You do? Yeah, I got a text message after the ball game from Tony La Russa. Hey, I had right. mentioned Mike Squires had caught for the White Sox, and Tony was there then. He says, yes, Mike Squires did catch in a major league game twice, and he also started a game at third base. Hello, Tony. Yeah, good to hear from Tony. Nick Ahmed will lead off the ninth against Josh Hader. Then it's Jose Herrera. Geraldo Perdomo, the switch hitter, has come out of the on deck circle, and he would bat for Herrera. And then the leadoff man, Josh Rojas. Diamondbacks have chipped away. They had a long first inning. San Diego got three runs. It was a 43 pitch first for Dre Jameson. He was done after that. The bullpen is held together. And every time that Padres have scored, the Diamondbacks have tried to answer back. Two in the seventh, two in the eighth. They're down two in the ninth, and Ahmed gets it started. Nick homered in the seventh. Alec Thomas and Nick Ahmed back to back in the seventh inning. That was Nick's first of the year. So here we go, down two, bottom nine. Took a peek down there at third base to see where Machado was playing. Tony knows that you're a staff. That's not a paid position, right? Does he know that? Uh, I'm sure he does. <laughs> he does now. <laughs> Lift it out to left for Soto. Drago announcing Geraldo Perdomo as the pinch hitter for Jose Herrera. Perdomo 0 for 4 last night, which snapped a stretch of three consecutive multi hit games for him. Looking for base runners. At least one, anyway. The pinch hitter in the on deck circle, Gabriel Moreno, has come out to swing a bat in place of Josh Rojas. Rojas, a left hand batter. Moreno hits from the right side. There's the strike. There's Gabby. That would leave Christian Walker as the only player on the bench for Tory. What makes Hader so good? I mentioned it throughout this series. He has that low three quarters arm angle, and you would expect the ball to tail away from a right handed hitter. But his wrist position when he releases the ball is nearly straight up and down. So it's a very true fastball. It doesn't tail as much as you expect it to. And for a lot of hitters, that's uh, deceiving. One ball and two strikes on Geraldo Perdomo. I mean, that's laser beam straight right there. The knees at 97. Two outs. The other thing Hader does well, he really hides the ball well. He turns his back completely to the hitter before pivoting and throwing that ball to home plate. Well, if you can get Moreno aboard here, that would bring Cattell Marte up to the plate as the tying run and batting from the right hand side. That's his power side. So we'll see if Gabby, who's been a tremendous bad ball hitter lately, can get aboard. Five hits, three RBIs in the series. The rookie catcher, Gabriel Moreno.
Gabby in his last dozen games is hitting better than 340 with 11 RBIs. Been very productive as of late. Takes a hack, pops it up, first base side, Cronenworth, and this will do it. Padres take three of four. They win the finale 7-5. The third save in the series for Josh Hader. San Diego gets to 500 on the year at 12-12. Diamondbacks still with a winning record atop the division at 12-11, and, and they welcome the Royals in tomorrow as Tommy Henry makes his Diamondback debut this year. You know, partner, even in losses, you try to find a positive to carry into the next day's ball game. And the Diamondbacks were more patient at the plate today. They drew some walks. They had some opportunities, but Darvish and that Padre bullpen just a little too good today. Yeah, it's tough to overcome a 43 pitch first. A bad day for Dre Jameson, who was spotted San Diego three early runs and that was it seven five year final up next D backs live brought to you by 72 soul Jody Jackson and Brandon Webb are next on Valley Sports Arizona.